Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington. Welcome to the woods here in Western Pennsylvania. Today I'm on the hunt for strange and interesting plants and mushrooms. I came across two that I wanted to introduce you to if you're not familiar with them already. Now why do I want to focus on strange and interesting plants and mushrooms? Well, not a lot of people give them enough credit, and without these plants and mushrooms, our woods here, at least in the eastern half of North America, definitely would not be the same. So stay tuned, let's go see what these two strange and interesting plants and mushrooms are. There are two strange mushrooms right down here, and I pulled another one off, so this is the third. And what's strange about this is that it looks like a coral mushroom. Maybe you're familiar with the crown-tipped coral fungus, that one typically grows from wood this time of year. This one looks just like a coral fungus, and it feels like it, but believe it or not, this is a jelly fungus. And so this has the Latin name of Tremelodendron schweinitzii. This belongs to the order of fungi Auricularialis. So if you remember back to the Linnaean classification system, maybe you learned that in high school or in college, we've got kingdom phylum class order. This belongs to the order Auricularialis, which includes jelly fungi, including the wood ear fungus, which you might be familiar with, also Exidia recisa, the amber jelly roll. Those are jelly fungi. We've got that gelatinous tissue, but this one's really dense and it's really thick more like a coral fungus, but it is a jelly fungus. But there are two strange things about this that separates it from a lot of those jelly fungi, even though it's included with the other jelly fungi. Number one, this doesn't grow directly on wood. You find this coming up out of the forest floor. Number two, this one is mycorrhizal, it's not saprophytic. So almost all those jelly fungi, like the wood ear, Exidia recisa, and other ones, they break down woody tissue, but not so with this one. This one's mycorrhizal primarily with oak trees. And so if you like to look for chanterelle mushrooms, and who doesn't, right? If you like to look for black trumpet mushrooms or bolete mushrooms, you're really likely to come across this one right here because like those ones, this one is associated with oak trees and it grows at the same time. And so let's look at that Latin name for a second, Schweinitzii. Where do we get Schweinitzii from? Well, we get it from Louis David de Schweinitz, a German-American botanist and mycologist who, believe it or not, grew up in Pennsylvania, but on the other side of the state. So I live in western Pennsylvania. That's where I am right now. He grew up in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is about 65 miles north of Philadelphia, but he spent a lot of time botanizing and mycologizing all over the world in Europe, and he spent a lot of time in North America as well. And there are a lot of other fungi named after him, including this one right here, Tremelodendron schweinitzii. You also see Tremelodendron pallidum in field guides. It's a cool mycorrhizal fungus. Get out there and look for it right now. And if you're looking for chanterelles, black trumpets, and beletes, you're really likely to find this one as well, the jellied false coral fungus. Now this is a weird plant all around. This is skunk cabbage, simple acarpus fetidus. Maybe you're familiar with this plant and maybe you're familiar with its odor because it's kind of skunky and I can kind of get that smell right now, especially if you bruise the leaves or you bruise any part of this plant. This is one of the first wildflowers to appear. This year I saw it, I believe, on February 1st of 2017, but you'll see it really throughout March and April. Then these leaves appear, so we're pretty much familiar with the leaves because it's very easy to see in swampy areas in Northeastern North America. And many of us who get out in the winter time, in the early spring, can spot the flowers as well. But a very weird structure in Simplicarpus fetidus, the eastern skunk cabbage, is the fruit. And it's a structure that not a lot of people recognize or even see or even scout out. So this is it right here. You can see it down below. And it's kind of a tropical looking fruit. And it's dark brown blackish. And here's another one right here that I pulled off from another plant. And this one smells. So it smells just like skunk cabbage. It's kind of skunky, it's malodorous, but this is definitely the skunk cabbage fruit right here. And this one came from that flower. So if you remember that skunk cabbage flower, it's got that hood, and then it's got that ball inside known as a spadix with multiple flowers. And that eventually matures once it's pollinated by carrion-loving insects like flies and gnats into a fruit like this. So here's the cross section right here. And this is how this plant primarily reproduces, through seed germination and seed dispersal, primarily by rodents. And so not really through clonal root system, but primarily through seeds. And what's interesting is that the percentage of flowers that will mature into fruits is higher in swampy forested areas compared to the open marsh habitats. And so you'll find this plant in a variety of marshy areas, either the open areas or the understory and forests like this right here. So I'm seeing probably a lot more fruits than I would see in an open marsh area because I'm in a forested area. So I encourage you to get out and look for this plant, Simplicarpus fetidus. Look for the leaves and then get down low and see if you can find these really cool fruiting structures that almost look like tropical fruits, but they're not tropical fruits. They're fruits from Simplicarpus fetidus, the eastern skunk cabbage, a pretty weird plant in my opinion. Well, there we have it. One strange mushroom and one strange plant. You never know what's lurking in your woods this time of year. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.